1993, AM General launched a civilian off-road vehicle based on the Humvee, the Hummer. The Hummer owed its birth in part to the Humvee's visibility and success during Operation Desert Storm, where it achieved near celebrity status. However, it was another flesh and blood celebrity that helped push the Hummer over the finish line. In 1989, Arnold Schwarzenegger saw a convoy of military Humvees and decided he just had to have one. <laughs> now you're wondering why am I so happy, right? Well, let me tell you why. Because of this, the Hummer. Arnold's enthusiasm was contagious. AM General ramped up its existing plans for making a civilian version and launched production of the Hummer in 1992. The public fell in love with its unique off-road capabilities. The rest, as they say, is history. Hey guys, welcome back to another vlog. On this episode, we are going to do a quick overview on all the trucks. Uh, I should say the H1 Hummer model years and the model year changeovers and the different things that have happened throughout the years. Now, it's difficult to fit all of the details into a 15 to 20 minute vlog. It's just not possible. Literally, we can go on for hours and hours and hours to get you all the details. We're not gonna do that. We're just gonna hit the main topics. I know there's gonna be a bunch of Hummer geeks out there. They're gonna want to uh, interject. Please do so. Throw it down in the comments. Let us know um, if we miss certain things that are important that we should have hit on, um, or also if you have any questions too. So there are really important topics and uh, changeovers that have happened and upgrades that we probably won't be touching on. So um, if you have any questions, make sure you uh, let us know and we'll respond back in and hopefully answer some of those questions. So um, with that information, hopefully this will give you an idea of the different model years and maybe what suits your needs best for a potential Hummer purchase. So we couldn't fit every model year truck into the shop here. Our shop isn't large enough. We have the trucks outside, but uh, just not enough room in here. So what we did was we grabbed a truck from each kind of segment of uh, spans a couple years without too many changes. So starting off, we're gonna start off with the 92 and 93. That's the first model year that came out, which was the 92, pretty much unchanged for the 93. Yeah. We have a 93 behind us over here. Almost identical to a 92. The 92s, I think there are about 300 that were produced. Uh, I shouldn't say that produced, but um, sold. So 300 units were sold. It was a factory direct option. The only way you could buy it was calling up AM General and saying, hey, I want this. AM General did sell it on the Neiman Marcus Christmas catalog. So it was listed there. Um, I guess you could buy it through Neiman Marcus if you wanted to. 92s were all desert tan. That was it. One color, they were limited edition. Uh, didn't have uh, electric windows, didn't have uh, electric door locks. I mean, pretty stripped down truck, um, but still it had central tire inflation system. It had uh, rocker panel protection, uh, undercarriage protection. It had everything that you would want out of an off-road truck, a very aggressive, you know, fully capable off-road truck. 93, kind of the leftovers were all the, which are kind of leftover from 92, were all painted desert tan. So they used that desert tan and started offering some different colors. Like my old 93 wagon was a, uh, uh, the woodland green. And you could see the, the desert tan on the inside of the truck. You open up the door and the inside of the door panel was brown or desert tan. And that was just like the leftover paint from uh, wow. the prior year. So a lot of the 93s were, were titled as 93s, but they were actually produced in 92. Um, they sold 392s, I think, and then uh, so roughly 693s, and then they went to a dealership network. That's when they started to take stride and really started to get more sales, which is what brought us to. Yeah, it doubled their sales and then opened up um, a couple dealerships around the country. And um, it had the 6.2 liter naturally aspirated engine, which isn't to be confused with the old 350 gasser that was converted over to a diesel. Uh, you may have someone tell you that, that it's a gasser engine. It's not. There was a gasser engine that uh, they did con GM did convert into a diesel. Um, that thing was horrible, had all kinds of issues, but this engine is not. 
The 6.2 liter has 150 horsepower, 250 foot pounds of torque, which is extremely low, but they just don't break down. So that's the advantage. The, I've never had my 93 with the 6.2 liter diesel in there virtually have any issues at all. Just phenomenal runner. Then also in four low, off-roading, it has a tremendous amount of torque. I mean, it just, it's unstoppable off-road. Yeah. But there's some drawbacks, which, you know, Sanderson goes through all the time when he's driving these guys. Yeah, true, true. That three-speed kills it for the daily, you know, freeway hot driving, even highway driving, because everyone's cruising along a lot faster than that. But touching base what you're saying, the power and how it really is capable, I go out to the desert with my boy. He sits there and says, Daddy, that hill. And I'm white knuckled. He's got a big grin on his face. I haven't backed out of anything. It really has adequate amount of power to be able to do whatever you throw at it. Just take the freeway driving out of it. Yeah. that three speed it is difficult. Yeah. Like your 93, um, with the wagon you had, right? Oh, yeah. That thing would only do like 60, 65 miles an hour down the freeway. Uh, a couple points on 92, 93s. They don't have electric door locks, electric windows. However, a lot of the trucks have been upgraded over the years to yeah. include this. So you may, if you are buying a 92, 93, there's a good chance you have that. There's also a good chance that the air conditioning has been replaced. We'll get into that in a minute. 97 and a half AC units were a pivotal point in an upgrade. So a lot of the older yeah. trucks have that. So take a look at that as you're, um, you're looking at buying a truck. Yeah, on that though, they see you say getting the 97, even then that was kind of a lackluster system. So the AC system we're developing, we developed before, now we're doing a revamp setup. That obviously improved that dramatically. Well, and then on top of that too, if your 97 and a half or newer AC system does fail, you're kind of out of luck because AM General doesn't produce it anymore. Yeah, very true. So yeah, there's, there's a lot of factors there. Um, ultimately, I, I guess at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter which model year you get because it's all so highly customizable yep. that anything can be upgraded and customized to your specific needs. But um, yeah, so that kind of gives you a little background on the 92, 93 and that generation with the 6.2 liter diesel and the three speed tranny. Um, great foundation, uh, phenomenal off-road truck, but it is definitely lacking on um, the civilized world on the highways. Yeah, so, I kind of feel like they were trying to find their place, find their direction with it. Like the CTS system has like a manual valve. It's almost like you're turning on your sprinkler system at the house. You know, yeah. we've done it before. We're doing it on the copper truck, change it to the manifold, have that, that button switch for the act activation of the CTS. Yeah. Going from the rubber lines to the stainless steel lines. So everything is usable and adaptable to what the build, what direction we want to go with the build. And if you haven't seen the CTIS on an older truck versus a newer truck, Jason, go ahead and throw it up here. But what it is, there's a little knob down by your knee, the driver's knee, you flip it back and forth. Uh, it, it works perfectly fine. However, when it does fail, it's kind of a bear to get up in there to remove that valve and replace it. It, it works fine though. There's really nothing wrong with it, but yeah. the, the, the push button on there's the dash is involved. a little bit easier. Yeah, it's kind of nice. Sure. Okay, so the next segment is the, the 94, 95, because yep. there were some significant changes in 94, 95. The biggest difference with the 94, 95, in my opinion, is they really civilized the H1. Prior years are a little bit rougher, you know, no window, uh, yeah, it was a window dressed cranks. up Humvee at that point, really. Yeah, it really was, it really was. But the 94, 95 got electric power windows. They got the power door locks. Yeah. Um, I think they also got uh, cruise control, correct? Mm -hmm. And then the biggest thing is they got the 4Lady transmission. The 4Lady transmission, highly the used. Game changer. Yeah, yeah totally it, game changer. used on literally hundreds or thousands of platforms out there uh, around the world. But that four speed transmission, biggest thing for the end user, driver, is it increased the top speed from that you know mid 60s miles per hour range into uh, what they claim is 83 miles per hour, which I would say it's- Comfortable it's, 70, 75. Just yeah. watching your RPMs too. So yeah, so if you're on that verge where you're looking for something um, that you are gonna be driving and you're not gonna be changing out the transmission, the, the, the powertrain, I would say look, steer towards a 94, 95. Yeah. Cause that's gonna make it a lot more drivable for you. On the um, 94 model, they actually changed the engine as well to a 6.5 liter normal aspirated engine. Uh, what that means to you is virtually nothing. I mean the 6.2 going out to the six, or boring it out to the 6.5 didn't really make much difference. I think it was like 
five or 10 horsepower, very minimal, uh, normally aspirated. It really doesn't operate too well at higher elevations. Yeah. So um, in my opinion, that's not a game changer. It was just the updated engine and really kind of setting itself up for the 96, which yeah, had some changes. We'll one get to of the second. stepping stones as they evolved. The brand. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. Then into the 95, they got a lot of feedback from customers saying that they were having problems getting diesel. So they came out with a 350 gasser in the truck, um, which in my opinion is a horrible idea, does not belong in a H1 Hummer. The horsepower is great. It was actually more than the 6.5 NA, but the torque, torque. figures were lower, which uh, as we know, what drives this truck is torque. So gasser was peppy for the first like 10, 15 feet. And, and then it's face. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So. The torque figures, the torque curve, I should say, on a diesel engine is a lot lower. So it meets or it reaches max torque output extremely low. Typically, like for a um, 6.5 turbo diesel, 6.5, it's around 1,700 to 1,800 RPM or so. Where a gasser, I'm not even sure where that's at, 3,500 yeah, RPM? Higher end of it, yeah. So you really got to wrap the RPMs up to get that torque figure up. Uh, that's another disadvantage. And also fuel economy, man. Yeah. These, these things, the, the gassers, we're getting like six to seven miles per gallon. My old 6.2 with a three speed was getting around 10 or so. And then uh, with the four speed, it gets a little bit better, 10 and a half, 11 miles per gallon from what I recall. So a lot better fuel economy. Yeah. So. And since that engine is struggling, it's working harder. So it's overheating more. That's why you'll see people doing the, the extra cooling fans to help that. The other side note too with the gassers is I don't think I've ever had one come in here that I've heard that didn't have an exhaust leak, some weird like tap it exhaust leak sound. And that's probably from that engine just struggling running it at the higher RPMs or higher heat levels of its operating range constantly. That's a little background on, on the 94, 95. The interior was very similar to the 92 and 93. Um, obviously the electric windows and so forth. Uh, was there Change the HVAC controller from the cable style of the old 9293. Yeah, yeah. So they, they, yeah, again, it's just the first few years they really changed a lot. Almost every few year they're doing yeah. uh, these subtle changes, trying to find their place. Yeah, really refining it. But one thing too about the gassers is we love getting those in the shop because we're converting those over to a Duramax. Get rid of that gas engine, get the Duramax engine in there, which is a whole game changer for that platform. Yeah. Getting into the 96, 97, 97 and a half, um, and on up 98, that was a big pivotal year for 96. So we've got a 1997 over here, very similar to the 96. So let's go over here and take a look at this guy. All right, so we got a 1997 H1 Hummer behind us, very similar to the 1996s. Um, 96 was a pivotal year for the H1 Hummer because they put the 6.5 turbo diesel engine in there. Um, I know that the 6.5 turbo diesel engine was available prior years, but it was a side mounted turbo. It would not fit in this truck. So in 1996, GM came out with a valley mounted uh, turbo that was used in the van platform, if I recall mm -hmm. correctly. Yep, yep. So um, AM General jumped on board, grabbed that engine, threw it in here with the 4LED transmission. Phen phenomenal power package for the H1 Hummer for its time. Uh, put out 440 foot-pounds of torque, um, almost 200, 200 horsepower. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's, a, it's a good driver. So there's really, now you're talking like a truck that you can jump out in front of traffic. Um, you can drive around more of an everyday driver, get you to that off-road place, do your off-roading, and then get you home too comfortably. Yeah. So that was, that was huge. 96 was really that kind of instrumental year where it was, I feel the truck was really refined. Um, they also came out with the auxiliary tank, which is nice. They added 17 gallons in the auxiliary tank. So now you have dual tanks, the main tank, as well as the aux. And I forgot what the figure is, something like 42 gallons or so. We're not going to geek out too much as far as like all the numbers and details. But that was a really nice upgrade to have that additional range. It really wasn't necessary uh, based on fuel consumption because the truck ran at like 12 almost 13 gallons or miles per gallon, uh, about the same as the 6.5, maybe just a hair better. It's running a little bit more efficient. So it's really nice to have that added range out of the truck, which I really appreciate. So yeah, the 96 was instrumental. They also came out with a new interior on the 96. That 96 interior 
almost went unchanged. They did some more refinements, changed it here, changed it there up until 2003. So now you have this newer style interior, felt more like a cockpit in there and the whole dash would kind of wrap around you with the center doghouse cover. Um, then in 97 and a half was when Sanderson was talking about that AC upgrade. Okay. So that was a, a big year because it did upgrade the AC system. 97 and a half had um, a few more refinements. So they actually came out and started calling the trucks uh, 97 and a half. So if you can get a 97 and a half, that's great. It's already taken care of the AC system. If you yeah. can't, all you can find is 96 or 97. Most likely it already has the upgraded AC system. So um, take a look at that. So 96, 97, 97 and a half had the upgrades uh, from 97 and a half to 98 virtually unchanged. However, in the 98, they did change the diff ratio. Um, so it actually got a little bit better um, uh, fuel economy, if you could call it that. RPMs were dropped. And I think they're really looking to uh, drop the sound, sound levels inside the truck. Uh, they also came out with some sound insulation, which they were really looking to try to further refine that for the 98 model year. I think that's probably does a decent job of grouping the 96 to 98. Yeah. Um, virtually all about the same there with the understanding that 97 and a half on up, there were significant changes there. Um, you could argue to separate those, th those two different groups, but we'll group it all together. Yeah. For the California guys, obviously, or states that are mandated the smog and emissions restrictions, our state, California, obviously 97 and older is exempt, so that's kind of a good one to get if you're gonna build on it, if you're gonna make that buildable platform, do the Duramax as well. That's nice to get out from underneath that, that, that umbrella there. Yeah, really good point. And also, if you just don't wanna be hassled with getting your truck smogged and having to take it to smog every year that you have to in California, yeah. um, other states are a little bit different, but. Uh, you get into that 98, then you got to take it in and get it smogged. It's just, um, you know, another hassle where 97, like you said, um, doesn't have any smog regulations. So that's kind of a nice little feature there for sure. Um, so yeah, really the, the next group is 99 on. Um, there's a number of changes from 99 on. We'll, we'll try to hit on the bigger ones. But um, let's go over here and take a look at this guy. I think this is a 2000 or 2001. Fly yellow color, that was, I mean, I remember when this came out, I think it was in 96 that came out with the fly yellow. This is like the color to have. This is like in every rap video, every uh, music video, this is like the color. So um, fat, it probably didn't last too long, maybe 10 years or so. I still think it's a cool color. I dig it. You put black accessories on there, it looks really cool. So 99, they actually came out with, uh, Department of Transportation came out with some new regulations and they mandated all heavy vehicles, the 10,000 uh, pound class vehicles on up, they have to have ABS. That poses a problem for the uh, H1 Hummer. There's a couple different, I don't want to say flaws, but little um, catches to the TT4 system. On the half shafts, there's a ring on there, um, as well as it's like a little gear ring and it actually senses and picks up uh, how that half shaft is spinning and how it relates to all the other half shaft spinning. But there's a sensor on there. So I've seen and, and gotten mud caked on that sensor before and my TT4 system goes out. Uh, very quick and easy fix, you just hose it off or knock off the mud. But again, that's a possibility with that TT4 ABS system. Um, and also, uh, I know Sanderson has, has worked with a lot of customers where uh, computer systems fail. Yeah, so. There's a couple dozen of trouble codes that are in, within that system. The, the daunting 2.6 code, where the modulators fails. You know, that's the, like you said, the Wabco system. That's a complete replacement of that modulator, which is an expensive part. A lot, now, a lot of, times of the parts it providers, does. even AM General, puts a stipulation where there's no return on any of those parts because they overemphasize the troubleshooting because a lot of guys will go in there and they'll jump out they'll grab some codes oh i need to replace this hmm. and that's not it so they go reach back out like oh, i gotta return this it's not a problem this one is but no you're stuck with those parts so i didn't know that yeah interesting yeah makes sense all these trucks are fully upgradable you can get rid of that system you can go to like an arb air locker or the eaton e-locker and really that's the ticket in my opinion is the eaton e-locker it's literally a push button locker you can run at higher speeds you can engage it you have more control you can engage just the rear so um, sand conditions you want to keep the front end unlocked you can lock the rear only 
gives you a little bit more traction and get that rear end to break loose. You have a little bit more control and then you can disengage the rear. So you have more flexibility where BTM, there's no way you can beat BTM in sand. It's just not possible because you need higher speed in sand to operate the truck. Um, so yeah, that would be a huge advantage to have the e-locker e over the uh, BTM system. All right, so the last model year is the 2006 Alpha. They skipped a year, uh, 2004 to 2006. Reason for that was some EPA regulations that was coming down the pipe and getting the truck uh, certified going from that, uh, for that model 2005 year. So they actually didn't get it done in time to call it a 2005, so they skipped 2005 release it in 2006. If you look at your VINs, uh, production years are typically like the middle of 2005 is when they started producing them. So um, you'll see that 2005 truck is called a 2006. Um, the other kind of notable thing about that is the engine on it. So we have a Alpha over here. Let's go over and take a look at it. And very similar to all the other trucks, um, but the Duramax diesel engine in there. Now, that was an LLY engine. It is not a 2006 Duramax engine. It's a 2005 Duramax engine. So that was one of the biggest years for Duramax to switch over the model years. The 2005 was the LLY with a five-speed transmission. 2006 was a Duramax uh, LBZ with a six-speed transmission. It's not- Nine day difference. Just yeah. gotta inject that. They're completely different animal. That LLY, the LBZ, the five-speed and the six-speed, it was a Leap in the bounds of yeah. that. Yeah. With that LLY engine, it is a Duramax, phenomenal, but you got a five speed transmission, as Sanderson said, it's not the same as a 2006 or with a six speed transmission. 2006 has a lot more power, it's a lot stronger, but that six speed, that six gear ratio really drops it. I think it was like, what, 0.78 or eight something to one. So really drop that ratio down, and you're running the trucks at like, 2100 RPM or so at 85 90 miles an hour. I mean, it's it's huge difference. But also, you drive the Alpha versus uh, 2003, and it is stronger. You can feel it's a lot more robust. It, it, it is night and day different, but it's not what you're expecting out of a Duramax. However, when you get into like the LBZ on up, you put that uh, up against an LOY Duramax, and it's, it's a night and day difference. I mean, the LBZ is way faster, much more significant horsepower, torque, uh, drivability out of the truck. It really is the latest and greatest technology out there. Where the LLY, unfortunately, it got, it got stuck in that weird 2005 uh, model year engine as well as body. They didn't get the LBZ into it. If they had gotten the LBZ into it, it would have been amazing, uh, but it's not. So you're, it is much more drivable. You're getting into traffic a lot easier, but it is not what you're expecting from a Duramax. I mean, even just look at like their output that they promote. They're saying the standard 23 and older, or 2003 and older, sorry, is zero to 16, 14 seconds. Then they put this around 12 seconds. So it dropped it a couple clicks, but nothing like what we're doing on our LBZ LMM conversions for over seven seconds. Yeah. On a fully weighted 9,000 pound vehicle, we're getting, still getting that seven, eight seconds, zero to 60. Which, I'm not trying to rot dog these things or race them, but merging on the freeway, getting in any just overall use, yeah. you're now up to what a standard vehicle would be. Yeah, so yeah. Makes and it is a common rail engine, so it is a lot quieter. It is significantly different from a 6.5 turbo diesel. Yeah. But uh, like Sanderson mentioned, the numbers just aren't there, and that's because you got that older LOI engine. Uh, with the five speed though, over the four speed, you're getting into the Allison transmission. Phenomenal transmission. The five speed Allison is uh, virtually identical to the six speed Allison. They're based on the Allison 1000 platform, different valve body in there, different tuning on it. So you could, in theory, uh, and actually we did it on this truck. Yeah, this one has um, it. We took the five speed an uh, Allison transmission and converted it into a six speed Allison transmission, literally by dropping the valve body putting on the new uh, valve body out of a 2000, or the uh, LBZ 6 b tranny, and then also a full transmission computer uh, changeover on that. So you can convert the uh, transmission from a five-speed to a six-speed. That makes a big difference. 
but the LOY engine still isn't up to the same specs as the LBZ. The internals aren't as strong. Um, the performance output, yeah. yeah, not as tunable. I mean, there's, there's a laundry list of um, strong points that the LBZ had. So unfortunately, this was the last year and it was stuck with the LOY engine, which is unfortunate that Hummer left off with uh, kind of a subpar um, power plant. And that's also why we get a lot of trucks in here, alpha trucks that are getting converted over to the LBZ, LMM, LML, uh, Duramax diesel engine. It really brings them up to today's standards. Yeah, true. Uh, but yeah, 2004, getting back to the 2004, same interior. Um, so you could also get a 2004 if you really wanted to have an alpha, start off with that 2004 with the lower price tag and then convert that to a Duramax and now you have virtually an alpha, actually something a lot stronger than an alpha, a lot better, a lot more performance out we of it. We touched on that in one of the episodes. It's actually over at Paint right now. But yeah, we have a 2004 that we're in the process of doing the LBZ. Oh really, it's the 04, okay. Yeah, so, so I'm looking forward to that. Uh, also another upgrade on the, I think the 04 is when it came out with, so 04 and 06, is AM General started spraying the inside of the truck with a um, almost like a, a Linex material, a thin insulation layer. It does drop the sound level down quite a bit. Uh, downside to it is after 10 to 15 years in hot sun, it'll actually all start to separate off the body and fall down. So you take the headliner out and all of a sudden you've got this like black uh, plastic dripping down from the ceiling where it's all just kind of separate off there. So that kind of gives you a breakdown of the LOI. It's, it's a great engine. It's phenomenal. The Allison 5-speed is amazing. Um, the reason I would run by this guy if I wasn't wanting a higher performance is trying to find one that's super low miles, that has maybe 5,000 miles on it, 10,000 miles. They're floating around there somewhere. One of them's gonna pop up, grab it, and just put it in my garage and look at it. Yeah, we just sent you know, an upgrade kit to a golf customer who has 2006, 6,000 original miles. Wow, amazing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Don't see so, yeah, and just try it's to. It's a keeper, but it's kind of a keeper to the factory spec, almost the truest. Yeah. Although we have outfitted a ton uh, with our search and rescue roof, or a brush guard, roof rack, and all the above. So. Yeah, I mean, that, that would be cool to have as like an original bone stock alpha, last model year out there. Um, but again, it's. Um, a drivable truck, it, it, definitely a drivable truck, but if it's if it's gonna be my everyday driver, I definitely want LBZ or better engine in there. The other uh, thing to notate is the Alpha had Gen 1, Gen 2 vehicles. Gen 1, easy to notate or see on there, which is tan interior. Gen 2 was the black interior, so. Black interior, great yeah. yeah. I personally like the, the Gen 1 with the brown interior. Yeah, I'm they a Gen 2 guy. Kind of, it's Gen 2 guy. Gen yeah. 1, Gen 2. <laughs> You let us know what you like better, if it's Gen 1 or Gen 2. Um, obviously he's wrong and I'm right, because I think the tan fits in a little bit better with the, the ruggedness of the truck. But uh, let us know what you think. Also, if you guys have any questions on these model year changeovers and you want some opinions, comment below. Answer back with uh, hopefully uh, something that helps you out. If you have any questions too, don't hesitate to give us a call if you're looking for a truck. You're like, okay, I got this one or this one. We get a lot of calls each and every week that people are like, okay, this is what I'm looking at. What should I look for? Um, and what would you recommend? We're happy to help out, um, help out the community and get you guys into the right truck for your own, uh, your own needs. I mean, there's, again, so many details that we've overlooked. I feel like this could literally be a three hour yeah. vlog. Thanks for watching guys. Uh, we will have another episode coming out here shortly. Make sure you hit the subscribe button down below. And uh, again, appreciate you watching. What are you filming? Is that low? No. Oh. I just don't know what to do with my arms. <laughs> right here. <laughs>
um, 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 um,